Well, that's what GB News was saying. That's what they were trying to say. Uh, they're basically trying to say that uh, the Muslim Vote Project in the UK is a front for Hizb tahrir because the the Thinking Muslim podcast guy, Mohammed Jalal, is apparently a former HT leader. But of course, that's not what it means at all. Uh, I mean, there are many organizations that are putting their names behind this project in the UK, the Muslim Vote Project. And from what I can tell, they're on the spectrum of the Muslim community. So basically, they found one guy with a past that they consider suspect, or which they are now officially allowed to deem suspect, uh, since Hezbi Tahrir has been banned in the UK as an extremist or a terrorist group or whatever. Uh, and they not only want to use... Uh, they want to use that to discredit the Muslim Vote Project, but more importantly, I think, they want to discredit all of those other organizations, all of the organizations that are uh, co-signers of the Muslim Vote Project, because their main interest is in demonizing and defaming all Muslim organizations in the UK as extremist or as closet extremist. You know, I watched that piece on GB News, and it's obviously grossly biased, because of course it is, like saying Mohammed Jalal was the head of the... Uh, Hezbo Tahrir in the UK at the time of the London bombings, as if there's any connection whatsoever. I mean, no one, as far as I know, ever uh, alleged that Hezbo Tahrir had anything to do with the London bombings. In fact, Hezbo Tahrir has never had anything to do with anything, violent or nonviolent, that pertains to action. I mean, it's absurd to label them a terrorist group. They're a chat group. They're a navel-gazing society where everyone just looks deep into his navel and sees the Khilafah, you know? I mean, this is not an interesting group, in my opinion. It's like a, it's like a property scam, because you know uh, their members give money to Hezbi Tahrir. They, their members give money, so they're selling uh, to naive and gullible and well-meaning Muslims the floor plan of a palace that doesn't exist and that they have no intention of building. But it all sounds great, uh, so people fall for it, just like a property scam. But anyone with any experience in building or architecture would be able to identify immediately that the blueprint is ridiculous. It's a blueprint drawn with crayons. That's their khilafah. But yes, they're obsessed with politics. That group is obsessed with politics. And I said obsessed, uh, not educated or informed or insightful. They're obsessed with politics, like most uh, so-called Islamists. And over time, anyone who's connected with Hezb tahrir will eventually see that the group isn't serious about their own rhetoric, and they'll leave HT, and they'll move on to other political projects, which they think might actually uh, achieve something. So it isn't surprising that this man from the Thinking Muslim uh, podcast would move from HT uh, to get himself into something like the Muslim uh, Vote Project, that he would move away from that, or something like Ummatics, which is just a kind of, uh, sort of in my opinion, convoluted rebranding of Hezbi Tahrir utopianism. But again, uh, none of this is particularly interesting to me, nor is GB News and what they have to say. The Muslim uh, Vote Project is interesting to me. You know, I went to their website, uh, and a few things stood out. One was the talk of uh, connecting with, or what do they say, building relationships with allies. Well, that's an interesting uh, term. It's, it's, a, it's a somewhat revealing term. There's a degree of, in my opinion, psychological colonization in that sort of language. This is a word, first of all, popularized by the liberals, particularly by the woke and the LGBT of this generation. What it means isn't, uh, we both support the same cause together, which is what an ally is supposed to mean. What they mean by allies uh, is, is reciprocal support for each other's goals, each other's communities. It isn't really allyship in a single cause. It's the this whole identitarian politics notion of so-called marginalized communities having each other's back. Well, obviously, that can become a trap. This isn't unity. It's you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. That's different from real unity. Another problem with that term, this, this term ally, uh, and a problem with that way of thinking, in my opinion, is that it already implies a marginalized mindset, a besieged mindset, a sort of uh, isolated mentality, where you think that you're on your own. Well, there's uh, the, the Muslims are 2 billion people. The entirety of the UK is a drop in the ocean of the Ummah. But why aren't you connecting with the Muslims? Why are you looking for allies over there and looking down on Muslims in the Muslim world? You know, most of these groups uh, have nothing but derogatory things to say about Muslim countries and about Muslim rulers, about Muslim governments. They're alienated from the Ummah. 
they're estranged from us over here in the Muslim world, but they're running after uh, so-called non-Muslim, so-called allies in the West, in the UK, and so on. You're never going to get strong like that. They're talking about uh, putting so-called Muslim issues at the forefront of UK, uh, politics in the UK. What does that? Uh, how does that make any sense, really? You know, what does that even mean? What are Muslim issues exactly? And why should they be at the forefront of politics in a non-Muslim country? You know, the UK has a lot of problems. They have massive problems. I don't know which one of these uh, problems are distinctly Muslim issues or not, or how focusing on so-called Muslim issues is going to resolve any of the major problems that the UK has. I mean, it looks to me like uh, corralling Muslims in Britain around some sort of a niche set of demands or policies or issues uh, is more likely just going to remove the Muslims from contributing uh, to actually solving any of the real problems that the UK is facing. And that's only going to exacerbate those problems. This is a very flawed approach to politics, in my opinion. It's not an Islamic approach to politics, either. It's not an Islamic approach to trying to bring improvements to the society, which is something uh, that we should, as Muslims, want to do, wherever we are, whatever kind of society it is. What this approach is going to do is just create a, a list of boxes for politicians to tick that demonstrates a sufficient level of pandering to the Muslim community uh, in order to get their vote, in order to get an endorsement from the Muslim vote organization. Never mind uh, whether or not that politician actually has any ideas or any strategies for improving the UK in, 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 in any sort of real terms. The UK is in recession. You know, inflation is out of control. Energy prices are rising uh, relentlessly. 15 million people are in poverty. Tax revenues are down. The NHS is in perpetual jeopardy and crisis. I mean, what exactly is going well in the UK? They have made, the UK has made, a cascading series of bad decisions after the mother of bad decisions, Brexit, which anyone with any sense could see uh, would turn Britain into a castaway with no shore to swim to for safety but America. So are Muslim British citizens going to disregard uh, all of that, all of those issues, and focus exclusively on so-called Muslim issues? Well, where's that going to lead? You're, 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 gonna, you're going to uh, elect politicians on the basis of whether they cater to your pet issues. Where do you think that's going to lead? Further incompetence and corruption, frankly, and further division and resentment in the society between Muslims and non-Muslims. I mean, on their website, they said that 81% of MPs uh, did not back a ceasefire in Gaza. Okay, do you know why? Do you understand the interests that are involved? For example, as I said, the uh, intensified dependence of the UK on the US. So you see, this is the irony. If we're talking about like Hezbollah Tahrir, for example, uh, one of the aspects of their political naivete is that they seem to fully believe in the Western system, the liberal values, the liberal Western values, and so on, all while railing against them. But they fully believe all of this. They really do. And they, they think it, it operates as advertised. As if all you have to do is elect Muslim MPs, you know, or Muslim allies, and everything will improve. As if there's no such thing as Ahl al-Hal wal as power players, as interests, uh, influencers, and private sector forces. As if, as if there's no geopolitical realities that restrict and dictate the policymaking process. They have no comprehension. I mean, they have the comprehension of a kid in a primary school civics class. Democracy for dummies. And they think it actually works like that. I mean, look, not only did Brexit uh, increase the UK's vulnerability to American domination, it overall increased their dependence and their reliance upon major foreign investors like China and India and the Gulf. I mean, the GCC has uh, invested close to 150 billion pounds in the UK. You know, Dubai is a major financier of GB News, for goodness sakes. The Gulf was promoting Brexit precisely because it weakened the UK and increased both their own leverage uh, and consequently their own political independence to operate in their region without interference from the UK. I mean, I think that they're calling out radicalized groups like the uh, Hezbollah Tahrir and the, superficially, uh, the superficial politicking uh, of things like the Muslim vote precisely because uh, it's ultimately de detrimental to the Muslims and it interferes with the interests of both the Muslim world and in fact against the, the, the general welfare of British society, because it's not serious. It's unserious. So like I said before, uh, Muslims in the West, Muslims in the UK, Muslims in 
America need to figure out whose team they're on. And I'm not talking about having divided loyalty as a citizen. I'm not talking about being a, uh, you know, a British citizen or a, an American citizen, but having loyalty to a country in the Middle East. That's not what I'm talking about. That's Zionists. That's who does that. I'm talking about feeling yourself to be a part of the Muslim Ummah, the wider Muslim Ummah, and working in your country on the same page with the Muslims overseas for the betterment of the society you live in. Because like I said, the Gulf has been slowly gaining uh, leverage and influence in the UK, in Europe, and in the West generally. Brexit, the uh, sanctions against Russia, the uh, overall OCGFC plan to destabilize and deindustrialize Europe has created many opportunities to increase that influence. And that's a good thing for society, or it can be a good thing for society if we all work together, because that means the gradual replacement uh, of the non-Muslim private sector powers that be uh, with uh, BRICS and Muslim private sector powers that be, financial powers, economic powers, cultural powers, not political powers. Political powers are the weakest link. I mean, if you're interested in political office in the West today, that's like wanting to be the conductor on the caboose of the train. Because the destabilization project is happening uh, either way. It's happening one way or the other. And so if we don't step into that vacuum, then a predatory, ruthless, Western-oriented OCGFC will just burn and loot across Europe until there's nothing left. If Muslims step in, uh, then things can be stabilized again under new management. We're in an historic transition right now, and the roles are reversing. As I've talked about many times, the victims uh, of the West are now nascent powers. The BRICS nations are in ascendancy, and the UK, Europe, and the collective West are in decline. Any domestic political organizing or activism in the West has to consider these realities and this context and organize on that basis. And your most obvious allies are your brothers and sisters in the Muslim world. But, you know, because of uh, cultish groups like Hizb Tahrir with their simplistic mentality, uh, that's extremism, really. I mean, extremism of almost any kind is actually just a manifestation of simplistic thinking. They have Muslims in the West thinking that the Muslim world isn't Islamic, thinking that our societies and our governments are un-Islamic. So now they want to Islamize the West. And they want to do that by uh, basically deepening the divide between Muslims and non-Muslims, by insisting uh, on prioritizing so-called Muslim issues, whatever those are, and by organizing Muslim voters uh, on an identitarian niche basis without actually thinking about the real needs of the broader society. So ultimately, uh, they're just going to isolate themselves uh, even more in the West while uh, continuing to cut themselves off from Muslims in the Muslim world. So they're actually just making their space and their power uh, smaller and smaller, more narrow and more narrow. You know, a couple of years from now, watch, uh, they will disavow every candidate that they back in the next election. Take my word. And they'll call them hypocrites and traitors because they're approaching politics like a spoilt, emotionally unstable girlfriend. And they'll turn on you the moment you fail to pander to them uh, sufficiently. Because again, they think uh, somehow uh, that just having Muslims in office or having politicians who prioritize so-called Muslim issues, somehow that equates to uh, the Islamization of government. Even though they generally make takfir on Muslim governments, that prioritize Muslim issues in the Muslim world. They make takfir on those and say they're un-Islamic. But they have this unrealistic and historically inaccurate conception of Islamic government, of the Khilafah. And then they also have an unrealistic and inaccurate understanding of so-called democracy in the West. Uh, so they're blending these two fantasies together, along with a, uh, an overall obliviousness of power dynamics. So they imagine that they can vote this hallucination into reality. But like I said, uh, Muslims in any society are obligated to improve conditions in that society for everyone. And whatever negatively impacts the lives of all citizens, those are Muslim issues. And how those issues are going to actually be addressed in any society will largely be determined by unelected power, by the Ahl al-Hal wal -Aft. So you should focus on trying to influence those individuals and those institutions or else focus on becoming members of that group yourself, becoming members of Ahl al-Hal wal Now, I'm not, I'm not against organizing Muslim voters per se or educating them politically and so on. 
uh, mobilizing them and making their voices count in the UK, that's all good and fine. But the way this project is going about it, the objectives that they've outlined, I don't personally see this as beneficial. Neither for the Muslims, uh, nor for society as a whole, and Allahu alam. I hope that their vision will develop, inshallah, and I sincerely hope uh, that they will build relationships with the rest of the Ummah so that we can all work from the same playbook, from the same agenda, for the general betterment uh, of their societies and ours. And I don't see any other way to do it. Oh.